really hidden inside of our PUV equal NERT equations, we start to see other um, other units we'll be able to solve for. The video will need a moment to just catch up. Sometimes it falls behind. And this is the part I edit out a little bit later on. So we'll just give it a moment. I captured it. Oh, there we go. So I'm starting over. Our ideal gas equation can be used to determine many relationships involving physical properties of gases, specifically things like mass, molar mass, and density are variables we find inside of a Pouvenard equation. Let's solve for the first one here using the ideal gas equation. We want to think about gas densities. Density, of course, is a unit that comes to us in grams per liter. So we're trying to figure out where or where hidden inside the Pouvenard is a density formula. Well, if we think about what we know, PV equal nRT. Pressure, volume, and the number of moles. R is our gas constant, and T is the Kelvin temperature. We could think about inside of that parenthesis called N, the number of moles, really a relationship from an old-fashioned mole map problem. We know that to be grams over molar mass. Inside of an N variable, if I just kind of sub out N from a of NERT and just show it in its uh, equation, Moles we know is grams over molar mass. So instead of N, why don't I just plunk in grams over molar mass? Volume comes to us in a liter. And grams per liter is how we're representing density. So we just have a little algebra manipulation of our Pouvenard equation to try to get grams per liter. So think about what our goal is. If I want to manipulate Pouv equals NERT to get gram per liter, because that's the the very definition of what density is. We're going to just do a little manipulation of a Pouvenard. So we end up with the left side, grams, which is measured in mass there, over volume, which is measured in a liter. So the first thing I'll do is just bring the molar mass variable up to the left-hand side. So just thinking about bringing that up to the left, we have GRT remaining on the right-hand side. And we have molar mass times pressure times volume over on the left-hand side. Recall that we're trying to get mass over volume. So what if to both sides we divide by volume, so it cancels from the left, and since we want um, grams over volume here, Let's divide both sides by R and T as well, so we can cancel them from the right. And here's what we've done, just a little bit of manipulation. I'll write MM for molar mass times pressure set over R times T is grams per liter, which is the very definition of what density is. So once we've derived this equation once, it becomes simply just a plug and chug formula. We'd like to know what the density of a gas is. We need to know how heavy it is, its molar mass off the periodic table. The pressure unit, of course, matching with the R constant and the Kelvin temperature. Taking molar mass times pressure, dividing by R and T, will solve for the density. Density will come out in a gram per liter. So all of that allowed us to say PUV equals NERT, and hidden inside of that is the density variable. Let's take a read through for the first example problem and just show how we would use a PUV NERT to solve for density. And Serena, may I ask you to be a reader for our example problem number one. Thank you. So looking for density, whoops. Our formula we know to be molar mass times pressure divided by R divided by T. Molar mass times pressure times R times T on the bottom. When we're looking for density, it will come out in a gram per liter. We have a little molar mass work to do. Taylor, can you do that with me? We'll need to add the mass of a carbon plus four chlorines. So carbon with its weight of 12 and chlorine with its mass of 35.5. Let's hit together just to be sure we get a, a common weight. Okay. 
That's a match. Thank you. So just a little uh, mole map work there, adding up a formula weight. So now we have 154 as the molar mass. The pressure was given as 714 millimeter mercury. And JJ, what R constant will we have to use to match the pressure unit? Excellent. And Shelby, how about a Kelvin temperature equivalent to 125 Celsius? Thank you. So we have pressure in a millimeter mercury matching the R constant. We have our molar mass of 154 and our Kelvin temperature. Abigail, shall we hit together solving for density? Remember to go molar mass times pressure divided by parenthesis, the product of R and T. Let's see what we get. Are you already there? <laughs> Alrighty. Perfect. Me too. Well, close enough. 4.36 might have been just in the rounding here. So when I write out my density, 4.36, my unit, gram per liter. Thank you, calculator buddy. Allison, let's read through example two. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I think I just have to bump you up one for our second example using the density. Yeah. Is she giggling? Oh. The mean molar mass of the atmosphere at the surface of Titan, which is Saturn's largest moon, is 28.6 grams per mole. That gram per mole is telling us the molar mass of this particular atmosphere around Saturn. Surface temperature given in a Kelvin unit of 95, the pressure is 1.6 atmosphere. We'd like to calculate density of the atmosphere around Titan. So density requires knowing the molar mass, which this time was provided for us is 28.6 grams per mole. Pressure was given to us in an atmosphere of 1.6. So when we place in the R constant to match, 0.0821, and the Kelvin temperature already provided is 95 Kelvin units, so no conversion necessary there. Every one of our variables was provided. We were given molar mass times pressure divided by the product of R and T. Let's hit together. Olivia, would you like to hit with me for the density of atmosphere around Titan? Five point eight seven is a match. Thank you. And that unit for density, gram per liter. Thank you. Alex, now we're ready to hear a little bit about a second hidden variable, the molar mass. Could you just be a reader for us for the letter B on our notepad page? Thank you, sir. So again, it's just showing one time how we can manipulate PUV equals NERT and pull out something called the molar mass. If I just rewrite PV and instead of N, we put in what N is equivalent to, which is grams over molar mass, the very definition of what an ol, uh, a mole stands for. PV equals grams over molar mass times R times T. Really, starting with the same algebra, we'd like to get molar mass on a side by itself. So if this is our beginning point, subbing in for N the number of moles and letting that be represented by grams over formula weight, we can start to show the molar mass times the pressure times the volume is now equal to grams times R times T. The target here is molar mass, 
So why don't we just divide both sides by P and V, canceling them off of the left side. And once we derive it once, we can really just plug it in. If we'd like to know molar mass, the formula weight of our gas, we would take grams times the R constant times the Kelvin temperature, set it over P times V in a parenthesis as we divide on the bottom. So GERT over PV pulls out the formula weight. It's just allowing us to manipulate PV equal NRT, solving for the formula weight of our unknown gas, the molar mass. Alrighty. Shelby, let's do a read through with example one, bottom of page 13. Thank you. Looking for molar mass of our gas, GRT over PV, it's just as easy as plugging in. 2.5 grams was our mass. The R constant matches the millimeter mercury, so 62.4. Kelvin temperature of 35 plus 273 comes out to be 308 Kelvin units. Let's see, we're already in a liter, so no adjustment there. We've got GRT divided by the product of PV. And Nate, let's hit together this one, just to be a calculator buddy, make sure we get a common answer. Hey, thank you very much. It's a match. So the molar mass, 80.16, and that unit is a gram per mole. Alrighty, so solving for, sometimes you hear me call it formula weight or molecular mass of our unknown, GRT over P times V. Let's flip and take a look at a second example problem. Hunter, how about reading through number two? Thank you. Easy enough. Couple of things I'm seeing. We have a density given to us. Density is molar mass times pressure times R and T on the bottom. And we have our molar mass formula, GRT over P and V. G over V is what density is. This one is just a little bit, I would say, a um, couple of formulas to think about. If we have density given to us and we're asked to solve for molar mass, perhaps this is the easier equation of the two that we've derived. If we know density, let's set that equal to the target variable of molar mass times the pressure that was given to us in a millimeter mercury. The R constant that would match is 62.4, and the Kelvin temperature, I'll just take 12 and add the 273, and that looks like 285 Kelvin units. Remember, this is all the product on the bottom, so we'll take that in a parenthesis. Given density, we'd like to know molar mass. Given the density, this might be the easier equation between the two that we've derived. Targeting molar mass, so our key sequence, if I just wanted to see how I would hit that, 7.135 cross multiplied by 62.4 times 285 divided by our pressure of 743, and we'll come up with our unit, molar mass. Alrighty. So I'm just cross multiplying the density times R times T divided by P, and we pull out for the molar mass of our gas. And Brittany, let's do that together. Give me just a moment to hit. And share when you're ready. It's a match. Thank you. 
So there we have 170.8 and the unit there, gram per mole. Alrighty. We'll pause here with our examples. The next thing on our agenda, I'd like to see your homework paper from uh, last Friday with some PUVNERTS. See if you can't locate that. And I'll